Guys, JBI, I'm JB. In this video, we're gonna take apart these new 2025 Honda CRF 450R Showa forks. For 2025, Honda slash Showa made some updates and changes to these forks. So we're gonna take them apart as we do our JBI spec revalve and show you what's new and what's different about them. So come along. All right, guys, so for 2025, Honda came out with quite a few updates for their new bike and we are really excited to see that because uh well the honda is one of my favorite bikes i don't own one i own a ktm and now it's stark but really the main reason i bought the ktm was because of how much uh, demand we get for that suspension so i really wanted to get a lot of hands-on time with that um we do have gotten a lot of hands-on time with the honda as well we even have a spare set of suspension on it too so if you're ever interested in how we come up and develop our jbi spec settings you can check out some of our previous videos but today is going to be all about this new fork right now. So like any other fork, I'm just kind of backing out the clickers. And then now we're going to drain the oil out of it. And as we take this apart, I will point out to you what's new and what's different about these forks. And if these changes are a good change, a bad change, or maybe just kind of a sideways move. My guess, and my educated guess from experience already, is these are going to be pretty similar to what Kawasaki did on their uh, KX450 for 2024. So I think we're, we will see some similarities uh, in that. Contrary to what you may believe, I am not a fan of oil, at least working on oily stuff. So we're gonna get these forks drained upside down for a while. Let's kind of let them sit for a bit. So that way when we come back to revisit them, there'll be a lot less oil inside of them. Try to have a clean operation here at Ride JBI. We are pretty good at tuning suspension. What we can't do, or at least what we are limited to, is let's say tuning the chassis of a motorcycle. By that I mean designing a new frame, a new swing arm, or all the updates that Honda did to their bike. That's a bit out of our capability and resources. Um, not referencing engine hangers, I mean like the entire frame. So what's cool is Honda really improved the rest of the bike where we're not able to. So we're excited to see how well our JBI spec settings complement that new frame and also how we need to uniquely tune this new suspension to match that new frame. It'll be pretty similar to what we did with the uh, 2024 Kawasaki, meaning we're gonna re rely a lot on our previous experience with the 17 to 23 model Hondas and the specs we already have kind of as our starting point. And then we'll learn how that works with the new chassis and what we have to do to complement that new chassis. In simple terms, when the chassis gets better, the suspension just tends to work better. So more than likely, the settings we already have are just going to perform and feel even better on the new bike. Because of that, we're going to make some uh, specific changes as well. This may sound counterintuitive, but if we have a more compliant frame or a frame that feels more comfort to the rider, we can usually run suspension settings that are a little bit firmer without them actually feeling firmer. Uh, for example, we have slightly stiffer or firmer settings for our 2024 Kawasaki spec than we do for the 2023. Again, a lot of that is just showing you how much of an influence the frame has over that suspension. So we'll let these sit in here for a little while, let the oil drain out, and then uh, we'll continue our process of pulling these apart and showing you what's inside. So it looks like we got the plastic spring seat, which is very similar to what the Kawasaki has. Actually, it is identical. Uh, I wouldn't say this is a step backward or a step forward, just kind of lateral. Um, probably cheaper for Showa to make. I do think it's cool that the metal piston band is gone instead it's just plastic. So it probably slides better on the inside of the fork. Um, the holes are very much a similar size as the previous OEM spring seat as well. So I don't see this offering any more or any less damping effectiveness than the uh, previous version on it. And then next, we got the new fork spring, which Honda talked about. So let's pull this out. Cool. So here's the new spring. At first glance, it looks pretty identical. But let's lay it out on the table here and give it a measure. So the previous springs have been 475 millimeters long. Let's see what these shake out to be. Looks like they're about 500 even. So they have increased the length of their spring by 25 millimeters. Uh, if you're an SAE guy, that is pretty much an inch, minus 0.4 mils, so just a hair short on that. What does that mean? What that means is when we have this cartridge and this spring seat, 
Instead of the spring seat being located down here, it is now farther away from the oil in the bottom of the fork. So the spring seat is now not going to engage the oil in the outer chamber until later on in the travel. Now for fun, the Showa 47 millimeter twin chamber fork had a spring length of 493 millimeters. KYB has done a few different spring lengths over the years. When they first came out with their KYB SSS or AOS, in other words, twin chamber fork, that first spring length was 455 millimeters long. So about two inches shorter than this. After a couple years, around 2012, I think 2013, they went to a 470 length. And then when the new Yamahas came out around 2018, they went to a 493 length. So what you can see is a lot of the manufacturers are coming to agreements on what they believe is the optimal length of spring. This longer spring, I can't really see it being too much of a step forward or a step back or even a sideways move. I'd say it's just kind of a different spring. What I mean by that is if you were to ride two forks with the same exact setup, just different length and spring, you could probably certainly feel a difference, but the magnitude of change would not be that big. So I would not hyper-focus too much on the different spring seat or the different length of spring. We got the new cartridge assembly here. At first glance, it is very similar to what we previously had. What I'm looking at to quickly tell is all this tapering on this tube. And what that means is how our cartridge assembly vents off as it fills up with too much oil. Again, this upper tank has the same geometry as the previous um, Hondas. So that is a good thing. Let's get this opened up now and see what type of valving we're going to find inside of it. What I'm really curious to see is what is Honda or Showa referring to as a bending control valve. I think it's a leaf spring style in the mid valve section of the fork, but I could be wrong about that. Now we got this mounted up in our JBI vise. We're going to sell these at some point. We've had it for a long time. We were inspired by the old Motion Pro vices that got discontinued back when I was in my 20s. And I'm not 20. Um, so we went ahead and remade that. And someday we will release these. If you're interested, drop us a comment and we'll do it sooner than later. But we've had these for a couple years now and we've stress tested them and beat the crap out of them to ensure that they will work for a long time in a hard shop environment. Ooh, that's a gushy sound. Cool, so at first glance, we still have the same free piston as the previous generation bike, the 2024. Looks like we got the same sub valve, same main piston. We're not seeing any big difference in the valving or anything like that here. So uh, as of so far, pretty much the same hardware as we have come to expect in previous. Uh, what I can tell right now is that this free piston is heavily preloaded, or sorry, this free piston spring. There's a lot of tension on this right now compared to the previous ones. And I would imagine it makes these forks feel pretty chattery over uh, small bumps. Um, when you assemble the fork properly, the oil is what puts tension on this spring and free piston. I'm unsure why they'd want to go ahead and preload this. Um, the reason I say that is because I have preloaded these before and tried it and the fork doesn't work good when you do that. So I know from experience. So interesting setup. Uh, hopefully there's a way we can alter this to get back a little bit of play in here because this thing has quite a bit of fuck, a lot um, on it. Honda, what are you guys doing? You, you make such good bikes, but your suspension setting choices seems to be all over the place, man. What do you think, Ant? Well, we can't even get lock on grips on a 2025 model bike, so I think it's going to be a while until we see some properly tuned suspension. Man, yeah, it's because the Honda works so good when you have good suspension on it. But, uh, man, they've just, it seems like go, they go from one end to the other. Just, it's been fun watching the changes and updates they've done since 2017, meaning when this fork kind of first came out. And it, they either go from one end being really soft to another end of being really stiff. And so far, this just seems like a mismatch of everything. Oh, that's a weird noise. But let's see what this mid valve looks like. So 
So here's our new mid valve assembly. Definitely looks different. So what I'm looking specifically at is down here. And it is different from last year. It's not quite what we call a leaf spring style mid valve, um, but it is different. It does look like it is spring assisted uh, in some way, likely to help close it. So I'll be interested to take this more apart. Um, it really stands out to me that this isn't really a big departure from the previous design. So what I'd be curious is why the time and effort to do that if it's not gonna be wildly different. Um, for a lot of people that have a 25 Honda and maybe had your previous generations, you can probably allude to uh, the suspension performance maybe not working even as good as your previous stock bike. So wouldn't you agree, like, why go through all the effort of these changes if it's only a sideways move or maybe even a step backward? So, hmm, very interesting for what they're doing. Not exactly uh, what I expected, but again, not wildly different. If you have any experience with the 2008 Showa fork on the Honda CRF, it had a mid valve kind of similar to this and only had it for one year. Because after that, they went to uh, KYB and then they fucked up the frame in 2009 and then just ruined the Honda up until 2017 when they finally came out with the updated thing. But uh, cool, so, so far we're finding some new things. Um, not as different as I expected. So it looks like a little bit of the Showa parts Sorry, a little bit of the Kawasaki parts that the Cowie had um, with some minor updates unique to Honda as well. We're gonna keep taking this apart and installing our JBI spec Honda Pro 4 kit to this. And um, I'm excited because people that get to try our JBI spec setup on this new 25 Honda in comparison to what's in here now and what we're gonna do to it, I'm confident they'll be very pleasantly surprised with how much potential we can get out of these forks in terms of performance. To be specific on that, we're gonna get these forks to be a lot plusher on small medium bumps and have much better hold up and bottoming for aggressive riding and big impacts. All right guys, so to summarize our findings for today's video, first thing we noticed was they reverted to the plastic spring seat. For reference, here's the previous OEM one right here, again, made out of aluminum. They're also using a longer spring now. I have the previous spring laid out above this you see about a difference of one inch. Another thing we see is that the pressure spring, you'll notice that the spring is an inch longer than the previous generation. The other item we found is that the pressure spring up here is now preloaded, whereas previously it was not. The oil is what put the preload against the spring when we assemble it into the cartridge. Quick tip, if you're ever curious what fork you have, uh, the very top of these caps, Right, believe, right below where it says Showa, there is a three digit number. This one says B01 or I, kind of hard to make out. Other ones might say AF1, uh, I think AU1 is another one, but you can look that up and that gives you an idea of what generation Showa fork you have. And now the other part is the bending control valve here at the mid valve. A good way to think of that is just the mid valve like it was, which is some minor updates to it. So we'll get some cool panning shots of what this looks like up close. And in the next video, we will share with you guys the valving mods we did, why we did them, and most importantly, what you should expect as a rider to feel when we give back your JBI spec Honda CRF Showa forks.